Howdy, right, folks. Hope you're all staying safe. Let's talk about Tier 6, the Cachalot, or the Shalot, as I used to call it. Um, this is the last of the Tier 6 boats, and I think it's actually better now than U69, to be honest with you. Uh, the main reason I'm going to say that is because she has stern tubes, so when you're running away from somebody, you can actually run away and shoot them. So that does help. I've also tried this boat recently, and when it comes to shotgunning, if something's too close, it's closing on me. I don't fire my bow tubes. I just turn around and start heading away from the ship. And then uh, shotgun a bit that way. But again, that new shotgun roll three kilometers and the CPA video that I've got out, closest point of approach, makes shotgunning a little difficult. But I'm noticing with replays and multi replays, especially at tier 10, that the U4501 and the Gato are doing just fine. And so is the I 56. Plus, the I 56 has a gun. But let's talk more about this boat and what it can and can't do. I think I'm going after the submarine here. Yeah, I am. Um, let's just jump in and then I'll go through the review and I'll talk at the end of the video what I think it can and can't do. So right off the bat, her armor is completely, let's move that over there, there we go, it's paper thin. It's like paper mesh underwater, <laughs> so don't get hit. Survivability, 14,000, eh, a typical tier 6 boat. Artillery, she does have one gun. If you're shooting at something at 4 kilometers, you're probably spotted on the surface and having a bad day. Her sonar, it's got a 7.5 second ping reload. Now, first hit, you get 25 seconds on it, second hit with a ping, you get 50 seconds in the spot. And range is 10 kilometers for the torpedoes. Now, torpedoes, you got... Four tubes in the front, two in the back. Uh, and they load two by two, which means they only load two tubes at a time. Two tubes, say that fast. In the range of 10 kilometers. They're very little damage. They got good speed, but they can be seen from the moon, basically. Which kind of stinks, in my opinion. And I'm not a big fan of that. I don't know. I, I think you should uh, make them quite, you know, comfortable. Dive capacity, 178 units. I think that's 200, 2 minutes and 30 some odd seconds underwater, I believe. And whatnot. Uh, maneuverability, she's got 28.4 on the surface, and she's got a good rudder shift time, which really does help underwater. Underwater, she's 13.6, and she's got 8 second rudder shift time, and diving accident planes are supposed to be 2.5 meters per second, but none of the submarines can hit their maximum. Detectability, she's got bad detectability on the surface, 6.4. So, I'd be very careful. A lot of, a lot of tier 6 DDs and tier 7, tier 8 can actually outspot you, so. Uh, what I also say, range when you have by the air, 2.3. Um, it's it's decent. Into equipment we go, and as you guys all know, uh, I take main armor modification number one. That's my first thing that I'm going to take engine room because you're going to get hit up pretty bad. The sort of modification to me doesn't really work. I do take dive capacity because I want to be able to get down quicker. This also recharges your batteries quicker per second, so it does help. You could take some of your surveillance modification that drops the timing of the consumer down by 20%. And then I take steering or sorry submarine steering gears to help out because I want to be able to maneuver as quick as humanly possible. Repair is pretty good. Last 48.5 seconds before it comes back up. The ping, the hydrophone, you can ping once, one second. Or sorry, eight seconds, you can see the boat. you got submarine surveillance. It's pretty straightforward. I like that. It's only got a range of six kilometers. It is not as good as the Germans, which are nine. And then, of course, you've got enhanced rudder gears. You press this when you want to dive and go up faster. It's diving the surface faster. It really does actually help. These are the uh, generalized flags. The most important ones are Sierra Bravo and, of course, X-ray Papa. That's designed specifically for subs to help them out. Let's go. Yeah, there's your torpedoes. Exterior, I've got the uh, default special camo with it. I just took the one that it actually comes with. You know, nothing special. Let's hop into uh, our captain skills. I do take liquidator because it gives me a 30% more chance of flooding. <clears throat> then, of course, I take helmsman because rudder shift time and diving to help as much to maneuver as possible when I'm getting attacked. I also take the, the next one for me, which is going to be a, a priority target. I do want to have people locked into me. These are kind of the generic skills I take. Preventive maintenance is important because you're going to get shot up if you get detected and killed. This one's kind of subjective, but I do take torpedo crew training. It drops me down by 15% when I'm spotted for reloading my systems. And when I get spotted, I want my torps now. Consumer specialist because I want more consumables, especially the, uh, the diving one. Watchful, I think, is the most important captain skill in the ship. You can take superintendent if you want even more and whatnot. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you if you want it to get more uh, consumables or if you want it to be faster. Torpedo aiming master, I take this as a the plus 15. It makes it better and whatnot for my torpedo aiming when in certain circumstances. And of course, I also take adrenaline rush. Now, what do I think overall? Um, this is a good example of this game. I was playing two brothers and of course I'm lower tier, which is fine. And I'm uh, the other submarine in front of me is a U69. So he has all the benefits of killing me. But what I did for my team, spot. I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't get a single ounce of 
damage this game? I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Maybe I did hit the good eyes. I can't remember now. But I decided to go out and push up and become a surface DD and go spot. Because if you notice in the map, there wasn't too many DDs around us anymore. We were already winning the game. But I spotted. Now, I think she's a good boat for spotting. I think it's a good submarine overall. The stern tubes actually do help, especially if you're going to get shot at um, and easy to get away with. I would just say if you're going to play this boat, make sure you give it some time. Uh, don't be so cocky. Uh, at the end of here, we really did have a good fight, a brawling match between me and the submarine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did actually kill him. But anyway, our sled, I lit him up as well, and I decided to go down and let him use his sub hydrofoam or sonar thing, sub surveillance. Find me, went back up the surface really quick, couldn't see me. And I was in no, I wasn't ever near any one of uh, his teammates to get spotted on the surface. So it was a good game that way. But overall, I keep it down. I would keep it kind of head away, still do the flanks come to him, help spot for your team. I, from our, as far as I'm concerned, you, you want to go actually and help your team as much as possible and let your team do the work as well and start pinging. There we go. Here comes a big sub fight. But hey, you guys let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think of the tier 6 boats? I'm moving on to the tier 8s now, and I've been playing them. Um, cash slot is just a little much better than the U69, and I don't like the Undine. And I'm looking at you, Shep. I don't care what you say. <laughs> so I got that's a personal joke to me and one of my, my, my teammates. But uh, do stay away. But let me tell you down below in the, in the, in the chat what you guys think about it. And, um, well... If you could do me a quick favor, I would appreciate it. Hit the like button. Smash the subscribe button. I already appreciate it because the YouTubes likes that. And as always, take care, stay safe. We wish you all the best. And bye for now.